cabin bed for sale, like a self assembled buyer to dismantle. It's <coughs> really good. It's had quite a lot to wear, but you know, it's, um, it's my son Darren's, he's selling it. Oh, oh there's something to finish there. No. That should do the trick, Ken. Mm. If you need to um, come and look at it, please get in contact. Not going to give out my number, uh, but I'm in the book. Mm. Or, or you can call around oh, sorry. Um, if you know where I live. <coughs> anyway, welcome to a brand new series of... Radio Shuttleworth. Shuttleworth, Shuttleworth. <laughs> it's clever, that, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Ken. Mm. But, you know, just be quiet for a minute, please, because I'm still doing the intro. Mm. Um, Sorry. Yeah, the show comes live to you from my house in Sheffield, South Yorkshire. Way! And uh, my special guest this week is none other than Barbara Dixon, currently wowing audiences at the Piccadilly Theatre in Spen, Spen, Spen. Yes, indeed. We also have an aspiring artiste, Bill Bailey. Good old and, Bill. And uh, an alternative comedian, will be attempting to make Mary merry. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Ken Worthington, my next-door neighbour and soul agent. Hello. That's who you can hear in the background. Mm. He's a member of the posse, mm. aren't you, Ken? Oh, yes. Normally, my wife Mary uh, is in the posse, mm. but she doesn't want to do it this week no. because uh, she feels a bit self-conscious, mm. open and cheering. Mm. But you don't mind, do you, Ken? No. Making a fool of yourself. Yeah. <sighs> Hey, that's enough, Ken. Mm. It becomes irritating after a while. Mm. You know, you're too ebullient. I'm sorry, John. Mm. Actually, I can foresee a problem, Ken. What's that, John? If somebody comes to look at the bed while uh, the show's on, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to have to ask you to deputise. Mm. Because Mary says she, she won't show anybody the bed mm. because she finds it too upsetting. Yeah. Because Darren's had it a long time. Well, that's you know. right. So, is that possible, Ken? Yes, it is. But with the following proviso. What? That whilst I'm at the helm, the show will be renamed Worthington FM. You've got to be joking. Well, I'm sorry, John, <laughs> but, you know, there's got to be something in it for me. Well, I get fed up with being in the posse. Yeah. And anyway, I should be at the halfway house now, helping another of my clients, Janet LaRoe, set up her equipment for tonight's show. I see. Oh. That'll be somebody about the bed, can It will. Um, will you take over at the helm of Radio Shuttleworth? Worthington FM, you mean. Oh, very well, Ken. Thank you. What are you doing? Let me just uh, swap microphones, because I don't Here want we... you getting my germs. Oh, that's very considerate of you, John. Thanks, Ken. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Worthington FM. Ooh. With me, your host, Ken Worthington, taking you through the night with some seductive sounds. <laughs> yeah, perhaps I'm being a bit mean, but uh, oof, Ken's demands were too extreme. Just put the microphone in the alcove while I answer the door. It's, uh, it's not somebody come to buy me a uh, cabin bed. It's Barbara Dixon. Hello, Barbara. Hello, John. How are you? All the better for seeing you, Barbara. Come on in. Thank um, you. Come through to the lounge. <gasps> Actually, no, Barbara. <clears throat> um, let's remain in the hall for a while. Oh. Can I take your coat off you? Would you like to take your coat? Yes, of, yes, of course, John. Yeah, that's very kind of you. It's quite cold out there. Yeah? Well, because it's February. It was even colder in January. <laughs> Oh, I remember that. Yes. January, February, don't you come around. <laughs> so do I. Lovely song. But made no sense whatsoever. No. You'd think you'd uh, write about March or April. Uh, yes. When you've got, you've got Mother's Day on the 2nd of April. Yes. You, in March, you've got two uh, patron saints' birthdays. Yes. You've got Shrove Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, there's a lot more going on. Oh, uh, hello, John. I've just got to pop to the gentleman's. Oh, it's Barbara Dixon. Hello. Hello. Ken Worthington, great pleasure Hello, Ken. to meet you. Hi, Ken. Are you, are you available for representation? Um, just... No, no, I, I'm not actually, Ken. No. I'm, no. Somebody looks after me already. Thank you, though. It's very kind of you. Oh, well, you know, no harm in asking. Yeah, sure. Um, I've put on tubular bells, John, so the listeners will be happy for a while. Right. <laughs> See you later, Babs. Ooh, another suitcase and another home. Sorry about that, sure Barbara. Um, come through into the lounge. <laughs> Radio Barbara, I've been uh, very remiss. I've not offered you uh, a glass of uh, cordial. No, I haven't had, I haven't had anything yet. No, and you, you must be quite thirsty after I your, am. your journey. Yeah. Have you come from Scotland? All the uh, way? Yes, I have today, yes. I went to see a cousin of mine who lives in Nochtamochti. <laughs> I see, well, you better have a whiskey then. Yes, well, that'd be it. Oh, have you got yeah. one? I think we have somewhere at the back. Yes, I'd like Christmas. a lag of woolen if you have one, please. Uh, I think we've got some uh, threshers. 
Oh, that'll do, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'll do fine, thanks. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Gosh. Um, you still uh, hump your own suitcase around? And put uh, the speakers in the back of the van. Is that right? I that... think that's not true. I wonder who said that. Oh, I read it in uh, Bella. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> it's not true. Well, shame on you, Bella. It's not true. Shame on you. No, because you see, I've got oh. a bad shoulder anyway. Have you? Oh yeah, it's not very well. Do you want some fiery jack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some of that. Yeah. Well, you can pop up to the bathroom. In a while. OK, that's um, great. Is it in the cabinet? It is indeed. Good, OK, well, I'll have Don't use too much. No, no, I won't. Um, that's very generous of you, thank you. Well, it's not very generous, because everyone should use a little bit. Yeah, OK. Can I have a twiglet? You can indeed. Yeah, thanks very yeah. much. Barbara's gone straight for the twiglets, yep. which have been arranged by Mary mm. <coughs> earlier in the day on I... a, a wooden dish. <coughs> oh, excuse me, Barbara. <laughs> <coughs> That'll be a cabin bed inquiry. Oh, we're selling uh, Miss Rundown's uh, cabin bed. Oh, good luck then. Black ash, self assembled, you know. Yeah. Yep. Oh, John! John, uh, will you look after Barbara? Yes! Yeah? Mm. Just for a few minutes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Barbara, here's my card. Oh, th 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 thanks, Ken. Yeah. Perhaps we'll pass it on to Benny. Oh, it, yeah. Cause, Benny, uh, Benny Anderson. Mm, from Upper. Because you've worked with them, haven't you? Yeah. Mm. I just think, you know, if Benny's in the area and beyond, yeah. You could perhaps come over with yourself. We could go for a sauna or well, something like that, you know, well, we've got a health club. Just renewed my membership, well, they, they, you know, it would be fine. You better get some um, uh, Carlsberg or something like yes. beer, you know, because they like right. beer. Mm. And some yeah. Rolmot Perrins. Yeah. Oh, I'm very excited. Barbara, listen to this. Ken Worthington. <laughs> do, do, do. Oh. There's a scruffy-looking gentleman carrying a keyboard. Did you come to look at the cabin bed? No, I didn't, know. Well, what's your business, lad? Hey, who are you? Uh, my name's Bill Bailey. Oh, of course. Come on in, Bill. Thank you very much. Impress an impressario, a chance to join Ken Stable. Impress an impressario, a deal is on the table. Impress an impressario, and I'll make you a star. Win Ken's applause, the world is yours. Incur his wrath. It's an early bath. Mm, it will be. Yeah. We're in the kitchen now, and Bill Bailey, who didn't bring a keyboard stand with him, he'll get a black mark for that, is having to use our ironing board. Uh, it's a bit low for him, actually, because my wife Mary was ironing her leggings on it earlier. Though it could be argued that helps him to achieve uh, a Johnny H. Jazz quality, mm. uh, or racy. Yes. You know, uh, low centre gravity. That's right. Yeah, looks good, doesn't it, Ken? It does. Though, oh, yes. Do you not think Bill, with his country bumpkin image, mm. could be mistaken for one of the Wurzels? Oh, yes. Mm. They could uh, comprise one third of a Wurzels tribute band. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes. Well, yes, things looking good for Bill. They are. And uh, he's not even begun. Or has he? This sounds like the intro, doesn't it, Ken? Yes, it is. Yeah, that's right. Mm, so shut up, please. <sighs> Sorry, Ken. A horse is a noble beast. From the Mustangs of the West to the Stallions of the East. But the horse has a distant cousin. It lives I do not know where. But its message of racial harmony Is one that we all can share Hats off to the zebras They are black and white But they don't fight Cause they're not very good at it In a world of confusion We all need a sign if only we could live side by side Like the stripes on a zebra's spine Hats off to the zebras Black man and a white man Both they need to shave United by the badger brush He's helping from beyond the grave from beyond the grave Hats off to the badger He is black and white But 
He doesn't fight except for mating rights and territory. Hats off to the badger. What about the lemur? What about the ring-tailed lemur? The old copy too. <laughs> Living together in harmony, and if the killer whale can do it, why can't we? Tell me, Lord, why can't we? Oh, <laughs> Bill, ba oh, sorry, I lost it a bit oh. towards the end there, but the basic gist of it. No, you didn't lose it, Bill. No, no, that was excellent. It was. Normally, John, I don't like protest songs. No, but I can imagine Martin McClutchen singing that with a group of school children. <laughs> Just as zebras. Oh, mm. yes. I can imagine a local TV news uh, programme being interested in that track mm. for usage during a humorous item about a zoo closing down or something like that. Yes. You know what I mean? I do. Mm. I do. Oh, no, yes. Was, um, I'm very excited. Mm. I'm very excited, Bill. <laughs> that you work. Excuse me, Bill. Hello? Who's that? Oh, hello, John. It's Hattie Hayridge. That's your Ayridge. Yeah, hello. Um, now, I've heard of you. Have you? Oh, that's good. You're on uh, Red Dwarf, aren't you? Sometimes, yeah. Bit scary. Oh, yeah, it is. Just a head floating about. Disembodied. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I know what you've rung, and it's not to buy a cabin bed. Make merry, merry, make a laugh. Prove alternative comedy is funny, not naff. Try and make merry merry. Well, you can try. Uh, whether you succeed or not, we'll have to see. It's unlikely because Mary is not a fan of alternative comedy. Neither am I. But oh, there she is. Right. Uh, you're right, love. Is it for me? It is. It's uh, somebody to make you merry, Mary. No oh, flipping neck. Don't worry, love. You'll be fine. <sighs> Mary's just been upstairs, um, wiping down Darren's cabin bed with a moist cloth. Right. <clears throat> Aren't you, love? Yeah. To make it more eye-catching. Jump. The prospective purchases. Get on with it. So, oh, Oof. here's a receiver, Mary. Thank you. Hattie Hayridge, you have a mere minute in which to make Mary merry. Starting from now. Hello, Mary. Hello. Now we are in the year 2000. I don't know if you did the same, but I remember when I was at the school working out on my rough book exactly how old I'd be in the year 2000, and now it's here. It's made me realise something, just how crap I was at maths. No. See, a lot of my friends got married straight after school. Mm. 16, you know, 18, not 4 o'clock when the bell went. But um, one friend was particularly annoyed, actually. Mm. She'd spent 35 quid on this baby alarm and uh, still got pregnant. You know, now we're in the future. Mm. We'll be able to choose the genes of our babies. XX if you want a girl. Yeah. XY for a boy. That's right. XXXX for a lager swilling little yob. Yeah. And YOYOY for some kid obsessed with writing to points of view. Mm. John. I don't know if you saw that film on the telly the other night. I didn't watch it. Apollo 13. Mm. I thought, I'm not watching that. I haven't seen the first 12, Mary. I won't know what's going on. No. I hope you weren't stuck in that power cut the other day. Terrible it was. I was stuck on an escalator. Three hours I was stuck on that thing. Mm. Three hours before they sent out an engineer. All he did was stood at the top and shouted, Walk down! Oh, dear. What can you do, eh? Mm. Hattie well, Herridge, your no. minute is up. Rubbish. Oh. Um, I just let you run on there slightly. Not a glimmer. Rubbish. Well, I was interested as to what your conclusion would be about the escalator. Yeah. Um, just stuck there. He wouldn't say walk down, would he? The defence it off, surely. Oh, no, well, I was already on it, you see. I was on it and uh, nothing you could do. I don't think it's true. I think you made it up to try and be funny, which oh. didn't work. No. Because Mary's walked off in a bit of a daze. And oh, you've proved well. yet again, Hattie. I'll have to go. I'll carry on with the washing the windscreens. Yeah. That'll be fine. It's illegal, that, isn't it? Oh, live dangerously. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking part, Patty. But no, you've proved I... yet again that... Um, alternative comedy is not funny. Yeah. Um, oh, well. I hope, you know, Mary is merry at some point. Yeah. She just slip something into a drink. A bit of Sanatogen or something. Hey. Sanatogen and Baileys, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. I'll look into them. Thanks, Hotsy. All right. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. It's Radio Shuttleworth with John, Mary and Ken. 
then, of course, I went to Diana's wedding. Oh. I wasn't invited, but I still went along, you know. Oh, excuse me, Barbara. Yes. Janet. Yes. Well, five didn't you phone her, didn't you? Oh, oh. All right, Janet, I'll come down. All right, bye. I'm sorry, listeners, I'm going to have to close down the station because my client, Janet Leroux, needs me at the halfway house. So, this is Ken Worthington, closing down, Worthington FM. Oh, sorry I didn't get round to interviewing you, Barbara. Ooh, uh, John tells me that um, you used to hunt your equipment. Is um, that right? Well, I, I haven't actually done a lot of lifting and stuff, but I know how to assemble electric guitar, you know, put my electric guitar and get it going and in, into the amp and all that stuff. Whoa. It's not terribly clever, but I know how to do that. Can you do phone out to five, then? Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know all about plugs, yeah. Mm. Well, this is very interesting, Barbara, yeah. because um, one of my clients, Janet Leroux, um, is doing a performance tonight at the halfway house, and she needs some help setting up a karaoke machine and then putting it into the back of a Fiat Chicatento. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I've just seen it written on the back. I don't, I don't know. I don't speak Italian either. Cinque Santo. You could iron, do a bit of ironing for her. She's got a green bikini. She just plays Alan and Dale. Oh. In, in um, Robin Hood. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, I, I, it sounds very tempting. Ken, ah, but, there you um, both are. Yes. Ken, what? would you mind popping upstairs and keeping an eye on Bill Bailey? Because he's jumping up and down on Darren's cabin bed. Is he? Um, prior oh. to, I hope, making a purchase. Mm. Um, he seems quite interested. Oh. But he's a big lad. Yes. I'm just concerned about the structure. Because it's designed for a child, really, Barbara, that bed. Oh. And then well, you can bring mm. him down for his second and final attempt to impress an impresario. No. Oh. All right, Thanks, Jones. Ken. You'll have to be quick. I'm needed at the halfway house. Now then, Barbara, I notice uh, you're admiring our antique fireplace. It's brand new, that, you know. Clever, isn't it? Oh, it's amazing what they, what they can do now, yeah. You know, they can... Uh... They can make things look hundreds of years old, can't they? Yeah. And they've just been made yesterday. I know. Yeah. Well, I just think that's, it's lovely to have the advantage of looking old, but actually being new. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great idea, yeah. Yeah, because you like old furniture, don't you? I do, yes. Yeah, I do. Ooh. Ooh. I've just had a brilliant idea. What's that? Come with me, Barbara. The jester hops on the leg of time The scourge of the wizard nation Madrigal chanting is no crime When you're suckled by a blind Alsatian Who stole the leg of time Seen through the eyes of Murgar's kestrel Where's the tiny mouse? There it is. Ah, ha, 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 Ride a white pig to the edge of Lapland. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? I don't know. Who stole the leg of time? When time had one leg, it couldn't march. It stopped. It hopped. Who stole the leg of time? Was it the wizards? No. Was it the goblins? No. Was it the elves? No. Was it the dwarves? No. Was it the kestrels? No. Was it the brain police? No. Was it the satires? No. Was it the orcs? Oh, no. Or was it the man with the key to the door of reality Underneath the mat of insignificance No Well, who was it then? Was it the pterodactyls? No Terrorists? No It was Terry Terry stole the leg of time Cockney Midlight Oh, 
Terry, you slag. You nick the leg of time. Give it back before you get a slap. Oh, take it down the dog and duck and leave it behind the bar or you'll get a slap sunshine. Don't give me no rabbit. Leave it behind the bar. Get off me, sister. Leave it behind the bar. Give Marv a pound. Leave it behind the bar. Who stole the leg of time? Terry! Stole the leg of time. The theft of time's leg was his crime. You know, that's a bit too spooky, that one, Bill, I'm sorry. OK. If you had the Chas and Dave bit throughout, you might be all right. But um, if I put you on the early show at the Legion, I'd be drummed out of town because there's a lot of families in there with the young children. And that song would frighten them. And then they'd start crying. And then the parents would get teased off and want the money back. Do you know what I mean? I understand. Then your keyboard's got no auto accompaniment, has it? No drums? No, no, it's one of the more modern ones. <laughs> really? Have you got a fantasy flute? No. No? Have you got a uh, kazoo, number 97? I actually have got a kazoo, an actual kazoo. I'm sorry, Bill. I, I can't ask you to join Miss Stable. OK. Uh, well, goodbye. <laughs> Ooh, he's folding away the ironing board quickly. And he's wrapped that flex round his keyboard in record time. <laughs> Bill, um, are you busy for the rest of the evening? Radio Shuttleworth. Right, here we are, Barbara. <coughs> this is my son, Darren's bedroom. Did you find the fiery jack, by the way? Yes, I did, yeah. It's, mu oh, it's much better. It's a real, real relief now. Yeah. It's well, marvellous. So yeah. you'll be able to help me carry it down? the bed. Oh. You, uh, should you choose to buy it, you might not. Let me yeah. show it you. Yeah. Well, here it is. Nice and old, isn't it? It's, you can see where he's been, you know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. Well, well you can see that it's it's lived in and it's belonged to somebody, yeah. which is what I like. But it's in good, good condition. Oh, yes, it is, yeah. yes. Because, bit... you know, Darren's 19 now and it's getting a bit small for him. Oh, it must be very small. How tall is he? Um, He's, he's, he's approaching six foot. Gosh. Wants to be a snooker player now. Oh, really? Yeah. He's got the cunning. And he's got the intelligence to be a snooker player. And I'm backing him up to the hilt on that. Has he got steady hands? Uh, yes, he has. He's oh. got nice hair cut, nicely groomed. Oh, that's good, yeah. And clean shaven. Well, he should do well, John, I think. Probably. All the ingredients. Yeah. Um, do you want to try the mattress? Barbara, have a, sit down, just see if it's all right. Yeah, yeah, I will do, yeah. Just see if it's comfy. Yeah. Ooh. I know him so well. Oh, hello, love. What's going on here? Hey? This is Barbara Dixon, love. Yes, I know. I've seen her on that band of gold. Hello. Truff. If you're feeling down and your bubbles burst, tune in to Radio Shuttleworth. It's the perfect way to relaunch Worthington FM. A live broadcast of Jonathan Rose concert from the halfway house. Yeah. And afterwards, Bill, you can do a vox pop describing any difficulties you had loading Janet Sinker Santo. Thank you very much. Bye, Babs. See you soon. Yeah, I do hope so, yeah. Oh, Jan, come back. <coughs> Barbara, you got your coat on. Are you cold? I'll turn the central heat up a bit more. No, John, it's very kind of you, but um, I've got a show to do tonight, so I, I, I don't really want to buy the bed. I've got to hurry because I need to get to the theatre. It well, shows at quarter to eight. I know, you know? but you're not in till the second half, surely, because you're playing the old of it in Spend, Spend, Spend. No, you? no, I'm in no. the whole thing. Oh, yeah? Does, yeah. Could it not be changed, you know, just for tonight? Well, no, they can't do that because they'd worry about it if I didn't say my lines. They wouldn't know what to do. All right, well, will you just sing this song with me then, please, Barbara? Because right, okay. uh, I've got my keyboard in the hall. Uh, ooh, it's nice. And um, it's all about Darren's cabin bed. Um, I realise the listeners are probably sick of hearing about this blinking bed. I know I am. Yeah. But we do need to sell it. Um, so hopefully, hearing this song will encourage someone to make a sensible offer. How long is it going to take to do it? Well, uh, it's about three minutes. Oh, OK. You know, it's length of a yeah. standard classic ballad. Yeah, there you are, right. those are the words. OK. Oh, yeah. right. um, thanks for listening, everybody. Do join me next week when Richard Whiteley will be my guest. <laughs> thanks, Barbara. Have you enjoyed being on the show? It was very strange. I see. <laughs> oh, who will buy my cabin bed? 
To tell the truth, it's my sons, and in a way, to me, that bed will always be Darren's. But now it is too small for him. The end plank chafes his ankles. Oh, who will buy my cabin bed? Buy her to dismantle. Oh dear, that's yes, pray so bad. I'm interested in your cabin bed and would like a quick perusal. Well, thank you, madam, but another mum has first refusal. Oh I leave a contact number and should the sale fall through, yes. please give me a tinkle and let my dream come true. I'd love to do that. Uh, yeah. Cabin bed, cabin bed It's made of black ash Cabin bed, cabin bed It's had a slight bash Cabin bed, cabin bed Well, I'd prefer cash, I suppose a check will do But no credit cards, Barbara No Tell me more of the cabin bed How long has it been here? The boy was ten when the purchase was made. He's nineteen now, so nine years. Where will your son sleep now? Is his new bed an improvement? Well, no, it's a mattress on the floor. He's just like a flipping student. Yeah. If I was smaller, I'd make it my own For the sweetest dreams are to be had By anyone who lies here And the Ninja Turtle stickers Ah, they're included in the price, dear I must admit I'm tempted yeah? I'll sleep on it if I may No, you're too big, it's designed for a kid oh. Oh, what a thing to say. <laughs> and yet it could be lengthened to fit an adult male. Of course. Yeah, you could do that, couldn't you? I'm sorry, but I've changed my mind. This cabin bed is not for sale. Cabin bed, cabin bed. It's not for sale. Cabin Oh, it's not for sale. Cabin man, cabin man. Oh, it's not for sale. Cabin man, cabin man. No, sorry. Radio Shuttleworth was written and performed by Graham Fellows, with additional material by Martin Willis. The producer was Dawn Ellis.